Hello, my name is Pavin Shah and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Manager with Portworks by Pure Storage. And in this video, we're going to talk about how you can run virtual machines on a modern virtualization stack without having to let go of features that you used to for running your applications in production. To start this video, we'll talk about your existing environments. You might have a VMware ESXi cluster running, or you might have an OpenStack uh, infrastructure based infrastructure in your on-prem data centers, which you might be thinking, okay, it's time for a renewal, a refresh, maybe modernize your applications, but you are not ready to modernize all your applications and break the monoliths down into container-based applications right away. Uh, in this video, we will look at how you can bring those virtual machines, your existing virtual machines, into a modern virtualization stack that's powered by Red Hat OpenShift and Portworks uh, to, to run your virtual machines and containers side by side. So let's start by your existing VMs. You might have VMs running in open, uh, VMware environment or OpenStack environments. And as the first step, you can use a tool called Migration Toolkit from Red Hat and move those existing virtual machines into a Red Hat OpenShift cluster. This Red Hat OpenShift cluster can be running on bare metal nodes in, inside your on-prem data center environments, or they can be running on uh, public cloud-based bare metal instances as well. So, uh, examples include services like the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa. Once you, are use, once you have used the MTV toolkit to move your VMs over to an OpenShift cluster, you will be able to use all the storage features that Portworks provides for your virtual machines as well. So let's start by talking about the first one. The first benefit of running virtual machines on the modern virtualization stack is that you use you get to use storage policy-based management features as well. So SPBM, right? The way it works inside Kubernetes or the way it works inside OpenShift is by uh, configuring something called as Kubernetes storage classes. With Portworks, administrators can customize the way their storage classes are provisioned. Uh, basically, which enables dynamic volume provisioning for your read write once and read write many persistent volumes. Each storage class can have different parameters, including things like different levels of replication, different uh, encryption policies, different QoS policies, different snapshot schedules. So as an administrator, you can still control all of that. And let's say you create a bronze, silver, and a gold storage policy for your virtual machines that you're migrating over from your traditional virtualization stack to your modern virtualization stack. Let's say you have moved over your VM, so you will have a VM object inside your OpenShift cluster. And again, this OpenShift cluster that we're using for this demo has three worker nodes, three bare metal based worker nodes. It has already read, uh, we have already installed it at OpenShift and Portworx, and we have configured OpenShift virtualization as well. Once you uh, start deploying VMs, once you move your VMs onto OpenShift, you can create namespaces to uh, namespaces are like a resource group kind of a construct, which allow you to group virtual machines uh, together. So once you have a namespace configured to run your virtual machines in, you can create a virtual machine object. This can be a new VM or an existing VM that you have moved over from your VMware or OpenStack environments. And this VM can have a, a persistent volume claim object, which is where it will store its data. So you can have different persistent volumes for different functions. So you can have a root disk, you can have a data disk, you can have a log disk. If you're running applications like Postgres or Mongo, on these virtual machines. These persistent volumes, because they are configured using the Portwork storage class, uh, let's say I, I used a, a replication factor of three for this PVC object, right? So it will lo locate my actual volume on the same worker node that my virtual machine is running on, but it will distribute its replica to a different node inside the same cluster. So in case anything happens to my worker one, if it fails for any reason, if it is a power failure, if it's this, if this is running in the cloud and I lose an availability zone, your virtual machine object can be restarted into uh, the second worker node and the VM object and the PVC object will be moved and it automatically attaches itself to the replica of your persistent volume. So you don't have any data loss. You don't have to do any manual operation. The VM will automatically be restarted. This is the same behavior you, you, uh, you have seen in traditional virtualization solutions like VMware as well. Next up, uh, let's talk about how live migration works. So live migration or vMotion is that aha feature that all the virtualization admins are already used to or they expect out of their virtualization stack. With Red Hat OpenShift virtualization and Portworx, you can get 
live migration capabilities for your virtual machines running on uh, on your OpenShift cluster as well. So let's say I have the same VM, now it's running on Worker 2, and I am, instead of using a read write once, I'm using a read write many persistent volume. So this can be your RWX volume. Uh, and once I go to the OpenShift console and hit migrate, it will take this virtual machine object and live migrate it to wor uh, Worker Node 3. It will also move this PVC object. And then if I had a replica on the on the third node, it would automatically connect to that. If not, it will connect or it will attach itself to the same uh, persistent volume uh, or the uh, portworks volume object as well. So this is how live migration works. So in a modern virtualization solution, you can still expect the same features like storage policy-based management, high availability, and vMotion or live migration as well. In, in, in other demos in the series, we'll talk about how you can still get features like data protection and disaster recovery for virtual machines running on, uh, on a modern virtualization stack. That's it for this demo. Thank you for watching.